intercepting routes in Next.js allow you to do a lot of really cool things, such as this example where a modal is opening up and actually changing the URL, and when you refresh the page, it brings you to an entirely separate page. This may seem like a really complicated task, but in reality, intercepting routes are quite easy to understand the basic use case. And in this video, I'm going to be going over both the basic use case as well as a more advanced use case on how they're used in a real world app. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to get started, I want to talk about the basic use case of intercepting routes and how they actually work, because that part is actually quite easy to understand. The whole idea behind an intercepting route is that when I'm on a certain page, such as my store page, and I click on another link to go to a separate page, such as my about page, instead of showing the normal about page that you would normally get to, I instead want to intercept that transition to a new route and actually show a completely different page instead. Implementing this is actually relatively easy to do. So in our particular application, I kind of want to go through what we have here before I jump into the actual implementation. I have four separate routes on my page. I have a home route, a store route, about, and then finally a login page. And all these routes are rather straightforward. You can see my home page, my store, and my about are essentially identical. And then finally, my login page here just has a little bit of extra content to show that form inside of its own component. Otherwise, these pages are really basic just to kind of show you the concepts of switching between different pages. Now, if I wanted to intercept a route going from my store page to my about page, what you would need to do is go to the actual route you want to start from. So in our case, that's the store page. And inside that folder, I'm going to create a brand new folder. And to actually specify an intercepting route, you're going to put it inside of parentheses like this. And this is actually going to work like a normal file navigation. So if I wanted to go back one level in my routes, I would put two periods here. And this would bring me from my store route to my slash route. If I wanted to go back even further, I could add a second set. So if I rename this real quick, I can come in here, put another set like that, and that'll actually go back two separate levels. Now, in our case, we only have one level to go back. So we're just going to use the double dots like this. And then we can specify the route that we want to intercept. So in our case, we want to intercept this about route. So we're going back one level in our routing to this main app folder. And then we're going into this about folder, this about route. So that's what we're saying. We're saying from my store route, intercept anything that goes to this about page and instead render a brand new page that's inside of here, this page.tsx. So I'm just going to copy everything from my original about page. And I'm just going to change it slightly. For example, let's say that my text should be red. And I'm just going to put about intercepted just so we can kind of see that this is the new about page. So now when I click from store to about, it should hopefully show me this intercepted page since I'm going from one route to another route. And I specifically specified what that's going to look like here. Now you'll notice though, let me click on home, click on store, click on about. You'll see it's not actually working. It's still showing my original about page. This is a relatively common problem with intercepting routes and in that sometimes you need to actually go ahead and restart your development server when you define new intercepting routes. So we're going to restart our development server. And now hopefully once that's done, we can go to the homepage store and about and you'll see it still doesn't quite look like it's working. Sometimes to fix this, what you can do is do a hard refresh on your page that should hopefully clear some things out of the cache. So now we can see we go to here and it's actually working. But if that still didn't work, just delete this dot next folder that'll remove everything in the next JS cache. And then you should see this implementation actually working. But once you actually have this page created and working, you can change it and you shouldn't have to worry about doing this refreshing stuff. It's just when you're creating a brand new intercepting route, there's some caching stuff that you essentially need to clear out. Now you will notice, okay, I'm on home, click on store, click on about, and it's giving me this intercepted route because I'm coming from my store page to my about page. If I go from my home page to my about page, I get the normal about page. It's only intercepting between store to about. Another really important thing to note is that when I refresh my page, I'm going to go back to my normal about page because I'm no longer going from my store to about. I'm just refreshing directly on the about page itself. So that right there is the absolute most bare bones basics way you can use intercepting routes. But on its own like this, I don't find a ton of uses for intercepting routes just because you generally don't want to completely redefine the page that you're going to when you come from a specific link. There's some scenarios where that may want to happen, but in the most case, you probably don't want this. Now, a few more things before we get into the advanced use cases for intercepting routes, I kind of want to talk about how you can define these a little bit more in depth. For example, let's say inside of here, I had another page, we'll just call it another and then inside of there, page.tsx, whoops, tsx, just like that, if I can actually spell properly. There we go. There we go. So now what I can do if I wanted to go to this particular route is I would just create a brand new folder inside of here called another 
and then I will put my page inside of that another folder. So it's going to work just like your normal Next.js folder and file-based routing. So if I wanted to route, I would just say I'm going back one level and then into about and into another. So I'm essentially replacing this particular route. Another important thing to note is if you had certain routes, for example, route groupings. So I had like a group and inside of that I had some folders, for example, we'll just come in here with a folder that says hi, doesn't really matter. If I wanted to go to this group right here, I would come in, let's rename this real quick. And all it would do is call this hi, just like that. Then obviously I would delete this another and put the page directly inside of here. So we'll get rid of that another folder and there we go. So I don't actually deal with these route groupings because they're not part of the URL. Essentially, this is only dealing with the URL. That's why I put the double dots here to go back one step and then into the high folder right here. So I ignore this like grouping style. Finally, if I want to do a couple other things, I can come in here, we'll do a rename. If I use three dots, that's going to bring me all the way back to the root directory, no matter what. So this will bring me all the way back to my app route. And if I use a single dot, that's essentially saying don't move anywhere, stay in the exact same route that I'm currently in. So these are the main ways that you can use this. Generally, I'm finding that double dots or combinations of multiple sets of double dots is generally what you're going to be wanting to do in these particular scenarios. So let's bring this back to what we had for our particular about page, get rid of all these other pages that we no longer need, and we're just back to our normal code that we had before. So now we can finally talk about the more advanced use case, and this is generally going to be for showing a modal instead of transitioning to a brand new page. For example, if you have an image gallery and you click on an image in that gallery, you may just want to show a modal of that image, but if the user refreshes the page or they share the URL of that page with someone else, it should bring them to a dedicated page for just that particular image. This is already in the Next.js documentation, so instead I'm going to show you an example for a login form. For example, if I'm on my store page and I click on this login button, I want it to show up as a modal instead of bringing me directly to this login page. Then if I were to refresh or share the URL with someone, obviously it would bring me to the login page. But if I'm coming from my store or my home or my about page, I just wanna have it show up as a normal modal right here inside of my page so that it doesn't actually move me out of the page that I'm currently in. To do this, we need to combine together both intercepting routes and parallel routes. Now, if you've not heard of parallel routes, it's okay. I have a full video covering them. I'll link in the cards and description for you. And if you really just want to deep dive into Next.js in general, I have a full Next.js simplified course. I'll link that in the description for you as well, because it covers everything you need to know about Next.js. So let's go ahead and talk about creating this intercepting route with a parallel route. Well, we want to show this on essentially every single page. So I'm going to put this at the root level of our application, and we're going to be creating a parallel route, and we're just going to call it modal. So we can say at modal, and that creates our parallel route. Now inside here, I want to create an intercepting route. So our intercepting route is going to intercept any transition to our login page. So we want to start with our current route because we're in this current app directory. So I'm going to be using the single dot here and I'm going to type in login just like that. That's going to intercept anything that goes to this particular login page. Now I can create a new file called page.tsx and inside of here, I can put whatever I want. Now, instead of making you watch me type all the code for the modal, I'm just going to paste it in here. This just is a really simple login modal that's going to open and close. The really important thing about this is whenever I close my modal, all I'm doing is making sure that my router navigates backwards to get to the original page that was currently on. Because whenever I open up this modal, it's actually going to change the URL in my browser. Now, doing this is getting us most of the way there, but we need to actually use this parallel modal route inside of our layout. So inside of our layout here, we can take our modal prop, which is coming in because we named this at modal. And I can come in here and give this a type just like that. And then down here, I can actually just render out that modal. There we go. Give that a quick save. So that all looks like it's good. And now we're almost all the way there. The very last thing we need to do is define what the default for our modal is going to be if it's not rendering anything. Because if we're not intercepting a route, we're not going to be rendering anything for this modal. So we need to create a brand new file called default.tsx. And the important thing is, is this default file goes under our at modal folder while the page goes inside of our login folder. And inside of here, we can just render out nothing. So we can say export default function. And this is just going to be default modal. And we can return null because by default, we don't want to render out any modal at all. But if we're intercepting a route to our login page, then I want to render out this modal right here. And this should be all we need to do to get this to work. Now, obviously, I'm probably going to have to completely stop and restart my server since I created a brand new intercepting route. But once that's done, if I come over here, give it a quick refresh, and we're going to go to home, we're going to go to store, and we're going to go to login, and we'll see that we're getting an error right now. So it looks like things aren't quite working yet. Let's do a hard refresh on our page, see if that fixes it. Still not working. So the final step, just delete that entire Next.js folder. Make sure you restart your server after you do that. And hopefully that should fix any issues that we're running into. So let's see if that worked. Give our page a refresh over here. We'll go home, 
store, click on login. And you can see that now it is properly popping up this login modal over top of my page. And you can see up here, it actually changed my URL to slash login. And if I close the modal, it changes my URL back to slash store. That's essentially what this on close is doing to navigate me backwards with my router. Now, if I'm on this page and I refresh, you can see it brings me to my normal login page, which is exactly what I expect because there's no intercepting going on. So this is really nice because if I'm on the store and browsing things and I want to just do a quick login, I can click here, log in, and it keeps the store in the background. And if I close this, I stay in the exact same place in my store. I don't have to worry about jumping between different contexts, which is super nice. Next.js can be incredibly complicated between caching, server action, server components, intercepting routes, and so much more, which is why I created an in-depth Next.js simplified course that covers everything you need to know about Next.js, and it uses all of the modern Next.js features. I'm going to link that course in the description for you if you're interested, but if you're wanting to learn Next.js and you already have some experience in React, I highly recommend checking that course out. But even if you don't have any React experience at all, I also have a complete React course that leads directly into my Next.js course that I'm going to link in the description as well for you. So I highly recommend you check either of those out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.